Uh, and I want to talk today, the title of the talk is The Unreasonable Effectiveness of Data, and for that I mean for understanding the world and for doing things with the knowledge. Uh, so let's look, about, uh, look at what it means to understand the world. And here's the traditional approach, that uh, you get a guy, uh, his name's Isaac, and he observes something about the world, and then he gets an idea, and then the hard part, he formulates that idea into a theory, and then you go and test and refine the theory and so on. And when you get it working, then you can do something useful, like the kind of stuff we did at NASA, of uh, put uh, ships into the right orbit and so on. Now, this talk uh, gets its title from Eugene Wigner, who wrote an article called The Unreasonable Effectiveness of Mathematics in which he said uh, it was a miracle of the appropriateness of the language of mathematics for the formulation of the laws of physics. He said it's a wonderful gift which we neither understand nor deserve. So what he meant is, isn't it amazing that we can do so much with these short mathematical equations, that F equals MA, that E equals MC squared, that PB equals NRT, and so on and so on. Uh, how is mathematics uh, so succinct and so powerful in describing the world uh, and he speculates on the philosophical reasons for that. But I think uh, only a physicist uh, would speculate on that. If he was a biologist, he wouldn't be going on and on about how short the equations were. And if he were a sociologist, even more so. <laughs> and so there are small parts about the world that, that can be described uh, uh, with very short equations, but we won't be talking about them here. Instead, we'll be talking about the messier parts and trying to figure out what we can do with those messy parts if we can't come up with a short equation. Now, the next figure in the story is a statistician, George Fox, who wrote, essentially, all models are wrong, but some are useful. <laughs> and so what he said is even the beautiful models like F equals MA are not quite right, and Einstein and others come along and, and uh, refine them a little bit. And if you're going to be wrong anyways, then why not just uh, be pragmatic about it? say, let's find something we can use and get the results that we need and not worry about being absolutely right. So it's kind of a different approach to solving the problem. So let's take Box's uh, inspiration and try to solve a problem with uh, a simple model. And we'll take as the problem predicting the uh, dates of the next lunar eclipse. Now, uh, I could take Newton's approach and uh, work out everything with F equals MA and the gravitational constants and so on, but uh, then I'd have to remember all that physics stuff. So what's a simpler model? Well, I took my favorite simple model. <laughs> <laughs> so I typed in lunar eclipse dates and I clicked on the number one result because I trust the result ordering. And I got this case. <laughs> and it was really good. And it told me all the answers for uh, all the dates I needed. The page is a little bit old, so uh, if I want to go into next year, I'll need another page. Uh, but this was a really good result. Now, in some sense, this is cheating, because somebody who did know about F equals MA had to generate these results. Uh, but in another sense, it's not cheating, because this is just a, as much a part of the world as those equations and the moon itself are. Uh, this is a part of the world and happened to be generated by another person. Uh, but we're observing this part of the world and getting the answer. So we really see this progression from, uh, I've uh, picked out these three people to uh, emphasize the three points of view. So Newton, with this scientific approach, saying it's all up to the scientists to observe the world and come up with a theory. And then uh, this is Ed Feigenbaum, representing the uh, good old-fashioned AI, or expert system approach saying, uh, yes, the human has to do that, but once we have those humans, and we have some experts out there in the world, maybe we can automate what they do by going and interviewing the experts, figuring out what they know, encoding what they know in a computer program, and then we can run that program and duplicate their efforts. But it's still, uh, all the effort has to be done by the human first. Then the final uh, approach, uh, characterized here by Udaya Pearl, is the statistical machine learning approach, where we say we don't need to have an expert tell us a theory. Maybe we can gather enough data and run statistics over that, and that will tell us the answer without having to have an expert input. 